What's going on everybody? Today we are going to be painting this extra deep diver crankbait. Now I've done a couple of shorts on Instagram and YouTube painting uh, this pattern right here, which is a fairly simple pattern, but for some reason this video on Instagram's got well over 200,000 views on it, which is absurd compared to the normal views that I get on Instagram. So I figured uh, if it worked once, why not try it again? So I did it with some orange and red, and this video is over, or is approaching 50,000 views, I think, which is crazy because I normally only get like a couple hundred to maybe a thousand on a video like that. So I figured you might as well do it as a YouTube video, and if you guys are selling baits, you should uh, do this pattern, film it, and post it on your Instagram. It might generate some revenue or some bait sales for you. But super simple pattern. I think today we'll be kind of combining these two different color schemes on one with this blank right here, which I've already prepped. And the colors that we're going to be using today are all iridescent. We're going to be doing the turquoise, an iridescent violet, and an iridescent fuchsia and then uh, some transparent black. I don't have any iridescent black. But pretty simple, only four colors, and we're going to be keeping the bait transparent just like I did on these. So to kick things off, I think what we're going to do is start off with the iridescent turquoise. And what we'll be doing with the turquoise is painting the entire side of the bait. I'm gonna leave the belly clear and I'm gonna leave the back clear because we'll do another color there later. But for the turquoise, we're just going to be focusing up on the gill plate and right down the center of the bait all the way to this back hook tie. And it's kind of hard to tell because the bait's transparent, so there's a lot of blue happening there. But I decided to go ahead and try on this one, covering the front of the head in the blue as well. And then we'll probably be able to fade our top color into that later. I'm going to hit this with the hair dryer and then we'll move on to our next color. And real quick, I wanted to point out that these iridescent colors say to airbrush through a 0.5 uh, tip size at 40 to 50 PSI or thin for smaller tip sizes or needle sizes. I'm using the Iwata Neo CN, which has the 0.35 and I haven't really had to thin these. I just have the air pressure cranked up to about 40 PSI and it seems to be running fine for me. But if you guys are spraying with a smaller airbrush or with a smaller needle in your airbrush, you might have to thin them a little bit or if you're having any issues at all, thinning them uh, never hurts. And for thinner, you can use some 40, uh, 11 reducer and that usually does a trick. For when I'm doing just one bait like this, I'll just kind of mix it in the cup of the airbrush and that seems to be working just fine for me if i was doing a whole bunch i would probably thin them in a smaller bottle or something like that uh, but our next color is the iridescent violet and what we're going to be doing with that is spraying up along the head and kind of fading it into the turquoise i don't want to cover the turquoise completely but i think a nice transition from the violet into the turquoise should look pretty fancy And I decided I'm gonna go ahead and hit it a little bit right back here by the back uh, hook tie. Okay, next up, we're going to be spraying the iridescent fuchsia. And the game plan here is whatever's still clear on the back of the bait is going to get a nice layer in that. And then we will go ahead and carry it right down the center of the top of the bait here, covering some of that iridescent purple from earlier. But we'll try to leave right around the eyes, we'll try to leave that all purple and that turquoise. So keeping the fuchsia primarily on the back of the bait, but letting it cover some of the purple up on the front and on the back. So our last and final color will be some transparent black, which I'll get loaded up and airbrushed in just a second. For the stencil that we're going to be using, it is actually this little hair clip right here. And we're just going to hold it in place and spray some of that transparent black, which will give us some really cool, nice vertical stripes. 
Now, a while back, I was selling this in with a variety stencil pack on my website. I'm not really doing the variety pack anymore. I'm just kind of doing individual sets of stencils. However, I have a ton of these still, along with probably 200 of these uh, combs for vertical stripes. So what I'm going to do, if you guys don't feel like going to Walmart and buying these packs, I'll have the comb this and probably like that brush i use for splattering the paint i'll have it as like a little three pack for a couple bucks on my website it's only really worth it if you're getting another stencil because the shipping is going to be three or four dollars but if you're there and you're picking up some other stencils i'll have that for a couple bucks if you guys uh, want some if not they will be available at your local walmart okay transparent black gonna get that loaded up in the airbrush and we will sling some paint And for the back of the bait, I'm just going to hold in place a nice little netting and hold it in place just like so. And that'll give us a nice little scale pattern just along the back. I'm not gonna worry about trying to get it to curve on the side of the bait. I just want it on the flat surface along the back of the bait. And we'll be spraying that in the transparent black. And there we go. Nice scale pattern on the back of the bait and some nice vertical stripes on both sides. Hit it with the hair dryer and then we will pick out some eyes. For the eyes, I think we are going to go with these blue ones. I think they match the color scheme the best. Or should I do these? Yeah, no, we're gonna go with the blue ones because I know the blue or turquoise Matches the turquoise on the bait. Whoop. A little, a little heavy on the glue there. That's a little better. And there we go, probably the easiest to do, craziest looking lure painting pattern. I don't know if I had mentioned at the beginning of the video, but I will have this blank linked in the description below if you guys want to get some for yourself. They are of course at Barlow's Tackle. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will get some clear coat put on this bad boy and then we will come back and take a look at what she looks like all finished up.